I I've serve a risen me. Savior. Yes, Lord. He's in this world today. Yes, Lord. I know that He is living, whatever men may say. I see His hand of mercy. I hear His voice of cheer. You ask me how I know He lives? He lives within my heart. Yes. Come on, put your hands together. Hallelujah. Christ is risen.
a mighty Savior. Come on, give him hands. You got to know he lives. Don't let nobody put you in the grave. Right now, he's living within you. Well. Hallelujah. We turn you to the hands of our pastor, Thank you. Bishop Charles L. Smith. Can we receive him by saying, Praise the Lord? Amen. Amen. Uh, we're going to uh, ask everyone that is in the sanctuary, we're going to ask you to stand at this time for prayer, and we're going to Remain standing after the prayer for our scripture reading. And if you are in the live streaming audience, we ask you to pray as well. If you're sitting in your chair or wherever you might be, just bow your head and call upon the name of God as well. And we believe in lifting up our hands to the Lord. Amen. We believe in lifting up our hands to the Lord and making our request made, made known unto him. Let everyone pray. Father God, we come before you and thank you for your great and mighty works. Hallelujah. I thank you for what you've already done. And I thank you for what you're going to do. Please remember us as we go forward in this service. We are celebrating your death and your burial and your resurrection. We're celebrating the gospel of Jesus Christ, who is able to save us, hallelujah, from the eternal damnation of hell, hallelujah. I thank you, Lord God, for everyone who has gathered here today. I pray that you will bless them. I pray that your anointing will come upon them. I pray that you would fill the sanctuary and wherever the others are with the presence of the Lord. Bless us as we go forward in this service. Remember those who are sick and afflicted. I pray for their healing, and I pray for their deliverance. Bless us, Lord, in this service, and have your way in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 You, remain, you may remain standing. For the reading of the scripture, let us turn in the Bible to the book of John. The book of John. Yeah, I heard a hallelujah in the back. Book of John, chapter 20. Amen. Let us turn in the Bible to John 10, uh, 20, verse 1 through 8. And we will read there from the word of the Lord. Amen. I should have had it marked, but I don't. Thousand one, thousand two, thousand three. <laughs> we are there. We are there. Let us read verse one through eight. Everybody ready? The first day of the week cometh. Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulcher to see the stone taken away from the sepulcher. And then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter 
and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and said unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they laid him. And Peter went, therefore went forth, and that other disciple came to the sepulchre. So they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter, and came first to the sepulchre. And he stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet he, the, yet he when he not in. And then cometh Simon Peter following him, and went into the sepulchre, and seeth the linen clothes lying, and the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in the other disciple, which came first to the sepulcher, and he saw and believed. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our scripture, our Sunday scripture text for today is John chapter 20, verse 6 and verse 7. And it reads, Then cometh Simon Peter following him, and went into the sepulcher, and he seeth the linen clothes lie, and the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Amen. And the subject for today is the testimony of the empty tomb. The testimony of the empty tomb. Hallelujah. A testimony, somebody might say, well, what is a testimony? A testimony is a witness. Amen. And secondly, a testimony is a declaration or declaring or showing or revealing, hallelujah, something to someone else. And three, a testimony is a form of evidence or proof that what has happened or what is about to happen, amen, is true. Hallelujah. This was a testimony of an empty tomb. Hallelujah. Now you say, well, what can a tomb say? What kind of voice does a tomb have? Well, the voice, as far as audible was concerned, was silent. Hallelujah. There was no noise. There was no voice. There was no vocal cords that were speaking. There was no words that were spoken, but the evidence was there. And the witness was there that Jesus had risen from the dead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And his clothes, they buried him when they came to bury him. And we'll look at that in just a few minutes. But when they came to bury him, they wrapped him in linen clothes with spices, which was the way that the Jews buried their dead. Hallelujah. They put him in a tomb, and they sealed the tomb so that Amen. His disciples could not say that, hallelujah, he rose from the dead, but that somebody could come and steal his body and then say that he had risen from the dead and made it worse than what it was before. Hallelujah. So they rolled a great stone up against the tomb and they sealed it and they put a guard there to make sure that nobody bothered Jesus' body. Hallelujah. But Jesus had already told them, go ahead. 
Hallelujah, kill me if you will. Put me in the tomb, but I'm not going to stay in the tomb for that amen time that you think that I'm going to stay there. As Jonah was in the belly of the whale for three days and for three nights, even so shall the Son of Man be in the earth for three days and three nights. And then I am getting up out of the grave. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I, ain't no grave going to be able to hold my body down. Hallelujah. Do what you have to do, but in three days, I'm getting up again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But no matter what they said, or no matter what they have prophesied would happen, God told him to tell them, you will rise again after three days. Hallelujah. In the book of John, chapter 19, hallelujah, verse 38 through 42, the Bible says that Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly, for fear of the Jews, brought Pilate that begged, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him leave. And he came, therefore, and took the body of Jesus. And there came also Nicodemus, which at the first came to Jesus by night and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pound weight. Then took they the body of Jesus and wound it in linen clothes for with the spices as the manner of the Jews is to bury. Now the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in a garden a new sepulcher, wherein was never man yet laid. They laid, there laid they Jesus because of the Jews' preparation day, for the sepulcher was nigh at hand. Hallelujah. They put him in the grave. They wound him in linen strips. They put a stone up against the grave, the mouth of the grave, and they sealed it. And they put an army outside to make sure that nobody bothered him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let him sleep. <laughs> Don't wake him up. Let him sleep. But I declare unto you today that this same Jesus <laughs> who went in the grave came out of the grave. This same Jesus that he crucified on the cross and they wrapped him in linen garment, a linen clothes, and put him in the grave, he got up. I said he got up. And he had power in his hand. Hallelujah. You don't have power over me. I have power over you. I have power to lay my life down, and I got power to pick it up again. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Laugh at me where you stand. Hallelujah. I will. I will rise again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so on Resurrection Sunday, he didn't need nobody to get him up. I, I declare to you, he got up by himself. So, but how you know he got up by himself? Because the linens that they wrapped him in was in one place. And the napkin that went around his head was in another place. 
Hallelujah. And when they got there, the angel had rolled the stone away and was sitting on the stone and was talking to Mary Magdalene and those who came. Hallelujah. In Luke chapter 24, verse 1 through 8, it said, Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher. They were bringing the spices which they had prepared and other, certain others with them. When they got there, they found that the stone was rolled away. Hallelujah. They entered in and they found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it, it, became, it became much perplexed because, hallelujah, the tomb was empty. Hallelujah. They were puzzled about it. And there were two men that stood by them in shining garments and they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth and said unto them, Hallelujah, why seek ye the living among the dead? Hallelujah. Somebody was telling me just uh, yesterday that we saw some hikers going through the graveyard at Spring Grove, hallelujah. Somebody said, well, I wouldn't want to come out here by myself, I guess, and, and walk, especially at nighttime. But all those people in the graveyard can't hurt you. All the people in the graveyard can't hurt you. <laughs> All the ones that got the tombstone on top of them can't hurt you. Because you don't find the living too much among the dead. Hallelujah. They said he's not here, but he's risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men. He will be crucified, and the third day he will rise again. The Bible said they remembered his word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He got up. Didn't he get up? Didn't he get up? He got up. And I submit to you that in verse 6 and 7, going back to John chapter 20, he got up off of the slab or whatever he was laid on. Hallelujah. You'd have to give me some little pointers about whether they lay them on a slab or whether they lay them on the ground or whatever, but it must have been like a table in there where they lay the dead body and just leave it there and let it decay and let the spices and all of those things keep down the smell and let it decompose as it goes along. Hallelujah. But I submit to you that after three days, there had to be a declaration of at least three days before a person was actually uh, counted as being dead. I hate to talk about death because we've had it recently. But Hallelujah. Jesus said that death will never harm me. Hallelujah. Death will never make me decompose. Death will never truly set in, this is what he's saying, on my body 
because I'm only going to spend three days in the grave. Hallelujah. And then the Lord is going to raise me up by the power of God, and I'm going to get up off of the slab. I'm going to take my linen clothes off, and I'm going to put them one place, and then the napkin that is around the top of my head, I'm going to take that off. Hallelujah. And I'm going to wrap it and put it in another place. So when they open up the empty tomb, the open tomb can testify that I am alive. Hallelujah. The evidence is there. How could he come out through a stone, a big stone that was sealed? How could he get up? How did he have the power to take those clothes off and lay them one place and then take the napkin off and lay it in another place? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He was alive. Mm. I said he was alive, church. Can't no grave hold my body down. I will give up my life, but I'm going to take it up again. You don't take my life from me. I give it for the salvation of the world. I die that people might be saved. I die that they may be brought out of sin. I die that they might have a power full relationship with God. Hallelujah. 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 So why did Jesus leave his clothes in there if he was going to go somewhere else? Hallelujah. He didn't need no grave clothes. And this is a mystery to me, and you can tell me if you know the answer. Where did he get his next set of clothes? Because Mary saw him shortly after this. She was in the garden. She thought she saw a gardener. He was all dressed. He was not naked. He had a nice garment on and she thought it was the gardener and he and she said if you know where they took the lord we did we found the tomb was empty but if you know where they took the lord tell me and he said mary rabboni it's you it's you I don't have to look for you. You're right in front of my face. How did you get out of the tomb? Without opening up the stone. How did you get out of the tomb without having somebody help you and fix your clothes? He got up by himself. The empty tomb said, nobody. Nobody helped him. He did everything himself. Hallelujah. Where did he get his new clothes? <laughs> How did he get out? They asked that in Sunday school class one time. They were asking the children, why did they roll the stone away from Jesus' tomb? They said, so he could get out. So they could find out that he wasn't there. That's why they opened it. Hallelujah. But he got up. And I believe that he had power to go through a cement sepulcher and get out. Hallelujah. 
He had power to transform himself to other places and appear before other people. On the road to Emmaus, he met two disciples who invited him to their house. They sat down to eat and they had prayer. Hallelujah. And he began to tell them how Jesus suffered and bled and died. But on the third day, he rose from the dead. Hallelujah. And he prayed and had a prayer. And they looked for him. And he evaporated out of the seat that he was in. And the next time they saw him, he was knocking on the door of the upper room in Jerusalem, telling them, open up the door. It's me. I'm outside. That ain't Jesus out there. But he got up. He got up. I said he got up with all power in his hand. He was not a mortal man anymore. He was the glorified Christ. He had power to, hallelujah, lift off of Mount Olive and drift up into heaven. Uh, he was not bound by gravity. He was not bound by where he was. I believe he went through the side of the tomb or the front of the tomb. And when Mary turned around, he was standing right behind her with a new set of clothes on. Hallelujah. He got up. He got up. The Lord God. The eternal spirit raised him up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, what did the tomb say? Hallelujah. <laughs> Mr. Tomb, where did Jesus get his clothes? Silence. You hear it? Silent. <laughs> How did he get out? Silent. Hallelujah. You like that silent? I can hear something running. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How could he do that? The tomb was saying he didn't do it by his own natural power. There was nothing natural about it. It was all supernatural. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He rose from the dead, triumphant, just like he said. Snatched the victory from the grave. And he's coming again, my soul to save. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I've been redeemed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What is a testimony? It's a witness. What is a declaration? A declaration is stating emphatically beyond any shadow of a doubt that this actually happened. Hallelujah. A testimony is a form of evidence, hallelujah, or proof that Jesus rose by himself. Jesus took his linen clothes off laid him on the slab, took the napkin away from his head, laid it in another place, and walked out of the tomb. Hallelujah. Clap your hands and give him some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the Bible said in the book of Acts, chapter 1 and verse 3, that he confirmed his own resurrection. Hallelujah. The Bible said, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days, and speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 through 4, Paul writes to the Corinthian church and says unto them, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I have preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sin, according to the scripture, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Hallelujah. Now I want you to help me do this. We're going to say the phrase, he's alive. Y'all ready? All right, we're going to say it three times. And if you want to say it four times, we'll say four. Everybody ready? One, two, three. He's alive. One, two, three. He's alive. One, two, three. He's alive. Ooh. 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 Hallelujah. How do you know that he's alive? I feel him in my hand. I feel him in my feet. I feel him all over me. I feel the anointing. I feel, hallelujah, the healing power. I feel that quickening that comes when I'm in the presence of the Lord. My God is not in the grave. My God is not dead. He is not in Jerusalem. He is not not in Joseph of Arimathea's tomb. He is alive. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Masa, who shall Masa? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can't you feel him in your hand? Don't you feel him in your feet? Don't you feel that quickening? all over you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If he was in Jerusalem in the tomb, you wouldn't feel that. Hallelujah. But when the Holy Ghost, <laughs> when the Holy Ghost begins to saturate your soul, you say, I wasn't going to tell nobody I'm one to keep it a secret, but I couldn't keep it to myself. Said I didn't want to get involved in telling people about stuff that maybe don't mean nothing to them. But hallelujah, I couldn't keep it to myself. What the Lord had done for me. Look at me, you see a miracle. Look at me, you see a healing. Look at me, you see a savior. Look at me, you see a deliverer. Look at me, you see a burden bearer. Look at me, you see a heavy load sharer. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Maybe you don't feel nothing, but hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's not dead. I said he's not dead. Maybe your God is dead, but mine ain't dead. Every now and then, I can feel the prayer wheel turning. Every now and then, I can feel it burning and burning. Uh, every now and then, I can feel a quickening in my soul. I can see him working. I can feel him working. I can be revived because he's working. Working. Working in my soul. Hallelujah. He's alive. I said he's alive. Maybe you ain't felt him for a while, but, but he's still alive. Hallelujah. And because Jesus is alive, And because he is with us day after day, night after night, hallelujah, we have a living Savior. Hallelujah. I said we have a living Savior. What did the empty tomb say? It said Jesus is alive and well. He's not wrapped in linen there over there. He's not having a napkin around his head. That's over there. But he is alive and well. And, and, <laughs> He is fully able to meet whatever your need might be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't have to worry about, I wonder if, if Jesus can handle this. Well, I don't know whether Jesus can handle this or not. Well, try him. All you have to do is try him. I'm not, I'm selling Jesus today. Hallelujah. <laughs> Anybody want more Jesus? Anybody need more Jesus? Woo, hallelujah. Anybody want this sale? Amen. To go forward. I'm selling you Jesus. I'm putting him on display. And I'm saying he's alive. He's alive. He's alive. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you troubled in your mind? Are you heavy in your soul? Hallelujah. You can take it to Jesus. Listen to what he said. Hebrews, this is not on the live stream. Hebrews 4.16. He said, let us, not me, but us, therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. If Jesus was not alive, you would have nowhere to go. You would have no one to hear your problem. You would have no one to help you. 
but he is inviting everyone who is under the sound of my voice today to boldly come to the throne of grace, fall down before him and ask him, Lord, help me. Help me. It's too much for me, Lord. I can't make it, Lord. I'm so heavy right now. I'm just about ready to cry. He said, come unto me, all ye that are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Hallelujah. 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 He's alive. He's alive. He specializes in things that seem to be impossible. And he can do. I said he can do what no other power can do. Hallelujah. Have you got some rivers that you cannot cross? Have you got some mountains that you can't tunnel through? I'm recommending today Jesus. His name is Jesus. He specializes in things that seem to be impossible. And he can do what no other power can do. Hallelujah. I'm recommending him to you today. If you got a problem, he's still alive. Hallelujah. 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 He is our intercessor. Hebrews. 7 and 25 said wherefore he is able also to save them save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him seeing he ever liveth he continues to live and to make intercession for them. Hallelujah. Jesus is standing at the right hand of God right now. Hallelujah. Making intercession for the saints. Hallelujah. He's hearing what you're saying at the throne of grace. He's showing you mercy. And then he makes intercession for every one of us that are saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. Remember them, Lord. Help them, Lord. Lift them, Lord. Strengthen them, Lord. Don't kill them, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's alive. He's alive. And if Jesus was not alive, we would have nobody to come and get us. <laughs> I said we would have nobody to come and get us and take us back to heaven. There would be no rapture. If he was dead, if he was still in Joseph of Arimathea's tomb, there would be no rapture. So where you get that from, Pastor? Well, I'm glad you asked. First Timothy, First Thessalonians, chapter four. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse thirteen. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. If, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, 
even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Hallelujah. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we that are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them that are asleep. Now catch this. This is you got to catch this. The Lord Himself. Who? You mean Jesus? One and the same. The Lord himself. Jesus himself. Shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Hallelujah. Now this is on the live streaming. You have to have the spirit of Christ in you. That is the hope of our resurrection. If you do not have that spirit, if you are not filled with the Holy Ghost, if you are not baptized in Jesus' name, hallelujah, hallelujah, death is going to catch you anyway if you stay here, but you have to die in the Lord. You have to die with the Spirit of Christ in you. You have to die living a holy, sanctified life. Can't be playing around and playing games with the Lord, but you got to be real. Not only believe he is alive, but believe that he's coming back for a church that doesn't have a spot or a wrinkle or any such thing. He's not sending Michael or one of the other angels to pick you up and take you to paradise or heaven. He's coming himself. And if you got that same spirit, if you have the spirit of Christ dwelling in you, that same spirit that quickened him, that same spirit that made him come alive, that same spirit that rose him from the dead, He will quicken your mortal body by that same Spirit. Romans 8 and 11. But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Now in the new version of the same scripture, instead of by his spirit, it says because of his spirit. Hallelujah. Because I have the Lord Jesus Christ living in me, because the spirit of Christ is living in me, I have his spirit living in me. But the eternal spirit who has the power to raise from the dead will quicken all of our mortal bodies and we will get up. I said we're going to get up in the morning. We're going to rise up out of wherever we are. If we're in the earth, we shall be chained. If we're in the grave, we shall hear the trumpet sound in that day. Hallelujah. And we shall be quickened by the same spirit that rose on Resurrection Sunday. Ooh. We got up. I said he got up with all power 
in his hand. He got up from the dead. He rose triumphant, like he said. Hallelujah. And lastly, when Jesus rose from the dead, all the messianic prophecy that had been spoken by him or of him in the Old Testament were all fulfilled. They were all fulfilled. They were all fulfilled. Not one of them failed. I said not one of them failed. There's evidence. There's a declaration of what has happened. There's proof. This whole room is full of proof that he is alive. Who got you up this morning? Who brought you to the house of God? Who gave you health and strength? It was Jesus. It was Jesus. In him we live. In him we move. In him we have our being. And if it had not been for his resurrection, nobody would have been saved. Nobody would have got the Holy Ghost. Nobody would have anybody to help them. But I hope in my feeble way, I can get you to see that you got somebody. Ain't nobody loves me. Jesus does. I can't find nobody to love me. Everybody hates me. No, everybody don't hate you. Jesus loves you. <laughs> so how you know, brother preacher? The Bible tells me so. Hallelujah. 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 God bless all of you, and may heaven smile upon you. Here's our prayer.